It is I, subjects, the Kaiser Cat. It has come to my attention that over 70% of you have not subscribed. This simply will not do. Press that subscribe button and praise your Empress Cat. Now, enjoy the video. After the revival of Kaiserreich, due to the release of Darkest Tower, Kaiserreich continued to flourish under new leadership. But what happened to the mod's original creator, Sarmatia 1871? The creator of the universe, since his departure from the project in 2006, has never returned to Kaiserreich. In fact, nobody has talked to Sarmatia in over a decade. For this reason, I decided to seek him out and ask him more about his inspirations and the unique origins of the universe. As Sarmatia chooses to remain anonymous, he submitted this interview in text, and his text will be read by voice actor Elazar Christian. So, Elazar, thanks for helping us out with this one. I thought it would be fun to have you read for Sarmatia, as it's a little more personal than a text-to-speech machine, which was our initial idea for this interview. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So, Sarmatia, thanks for coming out and doing this interview. You have not made an appearance for the Kaiserreich community in uh, close to two decades, I think. And there has been no direct contact with the development teams for even longer. A lot of people thought you were dead. Well, the stories of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. As you know, I am making a documentary about the origins of the Kaiserreich mod, tracing back the history of the mod in the early 2000s. It all starts with all the rushes, of course, but can you speak a little more on how all the rushes became Kaiserreich? All the Rushes was released in 2005, and I carried on working it into a releasable and playable state later in that year. Kaiserreich grew quite logically out of it, or from me getting bored of working on Russian things and wanting to sketch out new histories for other parts of the world. It seemed like Germany wins World War I, which leads to a very unsteady peace, was a premise that could accommodate most of the content from All the Rushes and um, also give a lot of scope for an interesting setting with lots of flexible gameplay options. I have a vague recollection of sketching out the core features of the Kaiserreich setting on a train ride. This included the overall setup for Europe, Africa, North America and Asia, the prevalence of syndicalism as the main left ideology and the idea that the US should collapse into a multi-sided civil war early in the game. The setting was unveiled in December 2005. I then constructed a very unstable alpha released uh, early in 2006. This was the initial core of the mod and other people came up with some additional things for South America and Australasia as well as researched and contributed things to develop the overall premise. Most of this is detailed in the original HOI2 thread, as Paradox, for whatever reason, didn't give us a subform. We also set up an external forum where we could coordinate a lot of this stuff. I think it was an Envision Free or something similarly ancient. There, we discussed the background and the premise in a bit more depth. Well, this has all sadly been lost now though, I think. After this, I disappeared about mid-2006. I was actually doing a PhD at the time and I thought I'd better concentrate on that. Interesting. So, Kaiserreich has a rich tradition of mixing with music and literary works. Back in the Hearts of Iron Two Days, 
Kaiserreich was one of the first mods to come with a full folder of music, much of it gotten from obscure sources. We discussed this in our emails, but could you touch on that subject again? What books and or music inspired Kaiserreich? I think music was pretty important in inspiring the setting. The choice of the name All the Rushes was partly derived from a very good BBC documentary from the early 2000s about Russian classical music. And most of the coding was done to Borodin, Stravinsky and Prokofiev. I was listening to a lot of Woody Guthrie, Billy Bragg, and related stuff when developing the Kaiserreich premise, which partly explains the syndicalism. I also found old school German patriotic music amusingly ridiculous. And this is why both mods had pretty well stocked music packs early on. And of course, why the game opened with the ear splitting version of Die Wacht am Rhein. That's amazing. When we founded the YouTube channel, uh, we began making original music covers, as you know. We never questioned why, it was simply something we felt was always a part of Kaiserreich. Uh, can you speak about the literary references, such as the Orwellian nod to Australasia? The literary references were added by later development teams. The only sort of literary thing that was part of the original mod premise was Orwell being involved in the Union of Britain somehow. Some classic books of 19th, 20th century history from the 80s to the early 2000s were very important in developing the overall themes of the setting. So Hobsbawm's series on the 19th, 20th century, Tuchman's The Proud Tower, Matsoa's Dark Continent, Mayer, Persistence of the Old Regime, and so on. The idea is that the setting is as much an extension of the 19th century as it is a reworked early 20th century. You mentioned Kaiserreich's setting is an extension of the 19th century Concert Europa. Kaiserreich offers the players a world of grey morality, taking away the handles of allies good, axes bad. Was this a deliberate reversal of the tropes of World War II games? Yeah, pretty much. From a gameplay perspective, I really disliked that in Vanilla Hearts of Iron, you more or less had to play as Germany, Japan or Italy to have an interesting game. While it is a game, but I found the idea of leading the Third Reich to victory pretty unpleasant. So not having clear good guys and bad guys was pretty important for the Kaiserreich. It's also true in terms of the overall setting. For example, it's another part of the reason for the syndicalism being the main left ideology. Pre-World War I, syndicalism was generally about hostility to political parties, bureaucracy, localism, and direct worker action. So, you have a form of radical left-wing politics that could potentially be more of a direct democracy than what was put in place in the USSR. But, on the other hand, if you look at the history of where a lot of syndicalists ended up, especially in France and Italy, Many actually aligned themselves with the fascists and far right in the 1920s and 30s. And the main syndicalist thinker, George Sorel, probably had more influence on the radical right than on the left. So there was a definite possibility for syndicalist regimes to mutate into a much darker form too. Plus, it also lets you mix things up and have people who were historically fascists on the same side as historical communists. Something similar goes on with the German side. When I was learning German history, it was at the time when people were moving away from the idea that everything to do with Germany in the 19th century was leading up to the Nazis, and that the German Empire was an overly militarized state, and instead emphasizing how diverse, fragmented, and modern pre-1914 Germany was despite the aristocratic and authoritarian political system. I never got around to doing much with Germany in the original beta. This was mainly because it was so important and needed to be done properly and with a lot of thought. But still, the idea was that it would be internally extremely dynamic, politically fractious and culturally interesting. So more Weimar meets Ruritania than the 
big militarized pressure that the Kaiserreich map might imply. In Kaiserreich, gameplay decisions informed the lore of the universe and vice versa. But what came first? Did you decide to carve up the United States, USSR and British Empire and build the universe around that? The gameplay and lore all meshed together quite logically, so neither really came first. It was pretty synergistic. There were a few major criteria for the universe, some focusing on gameplay and others on the general premise of the setting. The gameplay ones were firstly to open up areas of the HOI2 map that didn't see much action in the regular games. And secondly, to make sure that conflict would be unpredictable. So you wouldn't see the same alliances and combatants in every game. Collapsing the British Empire obviously goes a long way towards both of these. And having Russia and the US as both potential battlegrounds, the wild cards in terms of who they might end up aligning with if they reunify was actually very important. And with the setting, I wanted to avoid things which were too obvious, but still keep things relatively tropey and recognizable. This is why the elements of the setting are a bit of a pastiche of variety of different things. So have a US Civil War, but make it nothing like the rerun of the first. Have left-wing revolutions, but not where you might intuitively expect, and make them nothing like the USSR. And of course, get rid of pretty much anyone who played a prominent role in real history in the actual 1930s and 40s. And finally, things needed to be consistent. So taking the idea that if you make one change somewhere, there will be knock-on effects down the line elsewhere, often in quite unexpected ways. This is the butterfly effect that gets mentioned a lot in alternate history. So when looking at a part of the world, I went through the gameplay and setting issues and tried to work out what would simultaneously fit the main criteria and be relatively plausible. And the final rule was if there was a choice between a more plausible but ho-hum option and a less plausible but cooler or more interesting option to go with the latter. How much has Kaiserreich changed from your initial designs? What surprises you when looking at the project today? Well, from what I can see, it's been relatively in keeping with the initial designs, although with a few things shifting. So China and South America look very different and big things seem afoot for Russia. I'm most surprised, I think, by the scale of it. I thought the setting did have sufficient momentum to carry on for a bit after I left, but never thought it would last over 15 years and have however many tens of thousands of subscribers it currently has. Also, the uh, variety of genres it has expanded into. I sometimes toyed with the idea that the setting could work as a book, but never thought there would be a film short and animated comics, for example. Well, I'm glad Kaiserai continues to go strong. Any closing thoughts before we end this video? Many thanks for the invitation and good to see everything is going well with the setting and that people are still enjoying and developing it. I've actually only recently got Heart of Iron 4, so we'll have a look around the mod soon. So thanks to Sarmesha for doing this interview with us. We have reached the end of the second part of our What is Kaiserreich series. In the third part, we will explore the enormous surge of popularity Hearts of Iron 4 brought to the project and the impact GitHub and Discord had on the team management and development process. In the fourth part, we will explore Kaiserkat Cinema and our plans to bring the universe to all forms of media. In Kaiserkat tradition, and because research is still ongoing, we will release part 4 before part 3. Until then, this is Vincent signing off and I will see you for the next part, cats. Kaiser Cat Cinema needs you! Back the attack! Share our content or dash over to our alt history webshop.
I would like to acknowledge my fellow developers in the years this project has gone on. Kaiserreich is not only a mod or videos, it is also talking about the future of the project over schnitzels in Stockholm, debating the ramifications of nationalist victory in China during long drives to Berlin. I am proud to be able to share my passion for this project with such kind, intelligent and talented people. And I hope to meet many more Kaiserreich fans and developers as the project travels around the world. Special mentions, David Juriswe Bergström, who one of the longest serving general chairman elect of the Kaiserreich project, who wrote the first account of Kaiserreich history for PDXCon in 2017. Much of this chronicle is based on his work detailing the various teams and people that shape Kaiserreich. I also want to thank Comrade Zem, Zenkoas, Nijato, Strategia and Flamefang for coming together and writing the most in-depth history the project has seen so far. We look forward to inviting you to the four parts of this documentary project. The next part in this series will be a 15-minute interview with Sarmatia, the original creator of the Kazurak setting. I would like to thank our top patron backers, Izil, Kicker, Mr. Knowledge, Devo, Wolfrunner, Alex and Kingfish. This month we are also welcoming new patron backers, Polish Milk, top backer Rocket, Otaku, Andre, Igor and Elias Agen. As usual, you can support us by buying Altis Free merchandise, buying your own custom country flag, or supporting us on Patreon. I want to thank you for your continued support, and I will see you for the next one, cats.